Hey guys, Mr. Cheeps here. Sliders, hinges, pistons, and motors. What could they all mean? So in this episode of Rigid Body World, we will be taking a look at the types of constraints available within Blender. If you don't really know what rigid body constraints are, watch this video first, or just watch this entire tutorial series up until this point. Let's get started. Fixed is the first type of constraint. This pretty simply just connects two objects and does not allow for any movement or rotation. So if you want to stick two rigid body objects together so that they can break apart later, this would probably be the constraint to use. Let's move on to the point constraint. If I select both of these under the constraint menu, you can see that this active object will be anchored to the passive object with an invisible chain of sorts. If I grab another rigid body cube and give this some force so that it moves around, you can see that the cube can still rotate freely while being influenced by this point constraint. The hinge constraint is similar, but will lock the rotation and location to make your active object swing around the constraint. I'm going to use an arrows empty to demonstrate this, just so that we can see where the axis is pointing. Now we have our active object orbiting our passive object if we move it around with this other cube. It should work in a complete circle without any further settings. However, if we want to change the range of motion that is allowed, we can toggle on this Z angle setting and set the lower and upper values to define our range of motion. We can also rotate this constraint, and the active object will keep orbiting around the constraint's local Z axis. The slider constraint locks objects so that they can only move on the x-axis of the empty. If I constrain the passive and active objects and angle the x-axis of that empty so that it is pointing up, you can see that the cube can only move on that axis. I can rotate this so that the x-axis is facing in other ways too, and you can see that the cube can only move along that angle. We also have this x-axis toggle right here under the physics menu. If enabled, these two values will restrict how far the active object can slide along this invisible line. And next up is the piston constraint, which will restrict the movement of the active object to the x-axis like the slider constraint we previously talked about. However, this piston will also allow the active object to rotate around the x-axis. The piston is essentially combining a hinge constraint and a slider constraint, and you can see that Blender gives us the x-angle option for the rotation of the object and the x-axis option for the up and down movement of our object. Now the hinge slider and piston constraints are cool, but they all become essentially obsolete when compared to the almighty generic constraint. Generic gives us the angular hinge restrictions for all of the axes and the linear sliding restrictions for all axes as well. So it pretty much gives us everything we would need to create a hinge slider and a piston in a single constraint. If I toggle any of these on and just set the minimum and maximum values to zero, then that axis will be locked. So generic spring gives us all of the angular and linear things from the generic constraint, but also provides us with these spring mechanics down here. If I enable this linear Z toggle, you can see that this active cube will bounce up and down over here as if it was attached with like a bungee cord or something like that. See that the cube is still free to move on the X and Y axis so long as I keep those toggles disabled. I can enable all three of these linear spring toggles, and now the cube will just bounce around like crazy. We can use the stiffness value to change how lenient the springs are, and the damping will remove excess movement from the simulation while making it also less extreme. And the last constraint, motor, is a bit of an interesting one. It provides us with two toggles. Once again, they are angular and linear. However, since this is a motor, the angular value rotates the cube and the linear value moves it along the x-axis. See that? We can, of course, rotate the empty and the motor will keep moving along the local x-axis. 
Keep in mind that it will still be influenced by gravity unless that is turned off under your rigid body world settings, so you may have to lock the object location or rotation under the transformation dropdown to get your motor to go in the exact direction you want. The target velocity is how fast the motor attempts to move, so if I ramp the velocity up on the linear axis, it moves really fast. If I ramp it up on the angular axis, it starts spinning really fast. The impulse setting will make the object velocity start low and ramp up over time, giving us an effect like the motor is actually gaining speed. So those are all the types of rigid body constraints and their individual unique settings, but this video isn't over quite yet. There's one more thing that I want to show you. Let's suppose that we have a lot of rigid body objects that we need to connect, like a lot of objects. If I wanted to connect all of these objects by hand, it just wouldn't work, and my wrists would likely be gone by the end of it. Blender luckily has saved us in this regard, with this convenient rigid body menu under the object dropdown. All these buttons are extremely useful for quickly executing simulations. With these, we can add all selected objects in the viewport as active or passive rigid objects, which we would need to do first. The change shape brings up this menu for changing the collision shape, and this calculate mass button brings up this massive preset menu to change the mass of your objects. The apply transformation button will just apply the scale of your objects, which should always be done before you do a rigid body simulation. The main thing we want for constraints would be this connect button. With all of my objects that I want to be connected selected, I'm going to press this add active button to make them all rigid bodies, and then I'm going to press the connect button afterwards to add constraints between all of them. I would recommend always moving the rigid bodies and the constraints to different collections just to make things easier to manage. Now if you want to change the settings on all these constraints at once, keep them selected. If we shift select to make one of them active, we can change the settings under the physics menu. To apply this to all of the constraints, just right click on the value and click copy to selected to change that value on all the constraints. So if I want to make all these constraints breakable, I can toggle that on, right click and use copy to selected and now they can all break. So hopefully, you now know some ways you can use constraints. In the next video, we will be looking at self-fracturing and some tricks to make our simulations look better. So subscribe to not miss that. I want to thank you guys for watching, and have a great day.